Hello and welcome to Sleep Review's webinar, The Future of Sleep Medicine. Sleep Review is pleased to be here with three esteemed speakers, Dominique Monofo, MD, FABSM, Wesley Elon Fleming, MD, and Edward Stahl, DDS, MD, MBA. After the presentations, we'll answer your questions. Submit questions anytime via the Q&A box on your screen. We also have the advanced questions submitted on the webinar registration screen. So when we get to the Q&A segment, we'll lead with those. This program is brought to you by Better Night. Today's webinar is being recorded and you will receive an email tomorrow with the link to the recording. It will also be available for new registrants to watch on GoToWebinar for the next three months. Um, audience, because we had um, some sound difficulties a few minutes ago, if you could just put in the Q&A box um, on the right-hand side of your screen and just say something like, I can hear you, um, I think that'll make us feel a lot better. Um, I am now pleased to introduce Dr. Manafo, who represents over 30 years of medical expertise diagnosing and treating patients with sleep-disordered breathing. Welcome. We look forward to your talk. Thank you very much, Sri. It's a pleasure to be able to speak with all of you today. And I know that for those of you on the East Coast, uh, you're in the middle of your afternoon circadian dip in alertness. So I'll try to do my best to be engaging and not put anybody to sleep. Uh, as Sri mentioned, my background is a pulmonary care and sleep medicine. I've spent the last 25 years or so working with our team to improve access to high quality cost-effective sleep medicine care. And I'm very uh, excited today to show you our Better Night platform. I'm gonna be joined today by two of my colleagues, Edward T. Saul, uh, MD, DDS. Dr. Saul is a practicing ENT physician and is board certified in sleep medicine. He is also a practicing dentist and is board certified in dental sleep medicine. Dr. Saul will be talking about how he has incorporated a better night into his practice of dental sleep medicine. Also, Dr. Wesley Fleming. Dr. Fleming serves as the medical director of the Sleep Center Orange County. He's also boarded in sleep medicine, and he'll be talking about how he's integrated, integrated a better night and its virtual capacities to uh, alter the way he practices sleep medicine here in Southern California. I should like to begin by giving you a little bit of background about better night. Uh, we've been around, as I say, for about 25 years or so. We actually were the first company in the country to test people in their homes in all 50 states. That was back in 95. Uh, during the ensuing decade, we really realized that it was so important to be able to optimize CPAP therapy in order for the patient to actually get the benefit of the diagnostic sleep tests that had been performed. And by 2006, we were rolling out more comprehensive sleep apnea care management, and population management tools. Uh, in 2014, we also launched Optisom, which is our wellness division. And that was focused on a, a scalable enterprise solution that was web-based and provided a detailed health assessment, which led to a personalized cognitive behavioral therapy program for prevalent sleep disorders uh, in the population. And in 2018, we introduced the virtual care sleep apnea platform. And then most recently in 2019, what we're going to talk about today is our nationwide digital sleep management platform called Better Night, uh, which allows us to diagnose and provide uh, therapy for common problems such as insomnia and most particularly sleep apnea. Now, as I said, we've been around for about 25 years. The uh, principals have trained at uh, various institutions across the country, and we are licensed nationwide. We're treating over 30,000 patients every year, and in fact, last year, I think it was over 35,000. We've been fortunate, and we've worked very hard to have very high patient satisfaction scores over the last several years. On the top right, you can see that when it comes to CPAP therapy, we're able to double what is the typical long-term adherence to therapy, which has been typically sort of in the low 30s. We can generate in the high 60s to the 70s with, with regard to long-term uh, CPAP adherence and even higher levels, of course, at the Medicare threshold of 90, uh, 90 days. 
We also think it's very important that we submit our data and our work to uh, journals so that they can be peer reviewed and uh, make sure that we pass that threshold. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit now about how sleep medicine has been changing, uh, particularly during these very uncertain times. So clearly they ha there has been the rise of importance of telemedicine. It's had very rapid uh, acceptance among providers, patients, and payers alike. Um, it has, has the ability to really allow practices to continue in this time of pandemic, as well as also allowing a practice to expand its geographic reach. It's been projected that between the years of 2016 and 2021, the dollars spent on telehealth will triple from three billion all the way to nine billion dollars. Another important component is the improved technology. So there has been a tremendous improvement in home sleep testing technology. It's more accurate, it's easier, more reliable, less failures. And along with that, just the technology of modems and the ability to do remote in-home setups, which make things much more convenient. And again, a recurring message certainly during the times of a pandemic, uh, also very much more uh, convenient and, and safe for patients. So if we look at the landscape now, we see that there were years long established trends that have been dramatically accelerated by the presence of the COVID pandemic. So as we've talked about, HIPAA compliant telemedicine was certainly in place. We know that during the height of the pandemic, uh, there were reports of folks that were using perhaps non-HIPAA compliant technology just to be able to talk to their patients. But with time, obviously the use of HIPAA compliant telemedicine will be, uh, I think, a very important component. As many of you are no doubt aware, CMS has relaxed some of the regulations with regard to in-person visits. So you no longer have to have an in-person visit at that initial uh, determination of whether an HST would be appropriate. And then further down the road, they've also relaxed the requirement for an in-person visit with regard to whether or not the patient is benefiting from the, thera the, the therapy. So that allows us certainly to take care of uh, CMS patients. And although no one can certainly predict the future, uh, I think when you look at some of these trends that have been long established, it's not hard to think that a lot of what has uh, occurred may not change, may not go back to the way it was, and this is our new normal. There has been a long standing trend with regard to reduced dependence on in person visits, and those visits are now re re uh, reserved primarily for those individuals that have more complex needs. The reliance on HSTs is long established, and there has been an increase in their volume particularly since Medicare's uh, approval in 2008. And more recently, what we see now is a move toward actual disposable HSTs and Better Night uses some of those disposable devices, again, to make sure that patients are kept safe. With regard to PAP setups, we at Better Night for the last decade or so have been working on the protocols necessary to be able to set people up remotely. The technology has improved the ability to fit masks remotely has improved. And what we now have are protocols that allow us to set patients up remotely on CPAP and achieve the same Medicare compliance as we do when we do those things in person. Again, another thing that we've been really focused on is population management all the way back in the uh, 90s. And that has certainly become a, a, a major focus to not simply look at individuals but to look at a population and see how you're doing, your entire practice, your entire medical group, and how are they all progressing through the therapy and through the whole screening to therapy process. Now, insomnia has been a challenge for a lot of us for a long time. There really are inadequate resources. In-person visits are very difficult, uh, time-consuming, and now with, with COVID also problematic. So, we know that there are a lot of individuals that have comorbid insomnia and obstructive apnea. And so we have a standalone application that we use, the CBTI app, 
that allows us to help those individuals with apnea and comorbid insomnia to deal with those. When we look at primary care trends, clearly there has been a trend toward decentralization over a number of years. And with COVID, the advisability of bringing somebody who is sick or has symptoms or has been exposed to COVID into a crowded medical office or a medical center or a hospital clearly was not a desirable option. So again, it has accelerated this decentralization. On-site and near-site primary care play an increasingly ro important role in the delivery of primary care, virtual primary care. And I recently attended a virtual seminar uh, which detailed on-demand text-based primary care. So now I'd like to show you a little bit more about the specifics of how Better Night is actually organized. So here you can see that in addition to being available, of course, on any kind of a computer interface, Better Night platform is also completely uh, mobile friendly for any mobile device. So what are the components of the Better Night platform? Well, I want to start out by saying that we built Better Night to be modular and to be adaptable, because we, we know that there are many different practice models within the community. What we want to do is be collaborative, be complementary to those existing models and provide resources uh, for those that can use the different components. So you can see all the way on the left-hand side, as I mentioned, we've built an online sleep assessment. It's five or six minutes. It is able to screen for prevalent sleep disorders in a population. So if you need some assistance, if a, a sleep physician or a primary care physician, any physician wants to screen for sleep disorders, that tool can be used. If, however, you've already completed the screening and what you'd like to do is perform an online consultation, we can work with you on that as well. Again, with COVID, in-person consultations become much more problematic. So if you are doing some personal consultations but also would like to expand and be able to see some of your patients through a telemedicine portal, we can assist with you with that so that you can use our portal to help see your patients and care for your patients. If you've already performed the assessment and the consultation, perhaps what you need is a diagnostic study. So you can certainly refer an individual to us for a diagnostic study and we can perform the HST. If you're a sleep physician, we can also get you access to the raw data so that you can see it and you can actually interpret the sleep study on your individual patients. And then lastly, as you can see, if you just need therapy, if you want to refer someone for some form of therapy, whether it be CPAP or dental sleep medicine, we can also accomplish that as well. If someone comes in through the therapy portal, then they'll be entered into the remote patient monitoring, the CPAP coaching and follow-up, and ultimately will produce population reporting. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Again, we've talked about insomnia and comorbid insomnia, so we do have a standalone uh, application that we can use to assist those patients that are struggling with both the insomnia and obstructive sleep apnea. I, I think it's good to point out that you know the Better Night platform is able to offer all of these services due to its status as it's a partnership between a management services organization, a technology company, a physician-owned professional corporation and a durable medical equipment company that specializes in sleep medicine. So patients always have the freedom of choice to use alternate providers if they so choose. So with that said, I want to talk about who we built Better Night for. And we built it with particular practices in mind. So beginning with sleep physicians, Better Night offers the ability to keep your practice open during times of COVID and perhaps even expand its reach. We can lower overhead, we can increase your ability to see your patients through telemedicine and hopefully maintain your practice during some of these very challenging times. For all physicians, uh, Better Night offers access to timely, high quality sleep diagnostics as well as therapy. And as I will talk about more later, it really has unparalleled accountability on our part and visibility for you in terms of how your patients are doing on their journey. And then for dentists, 
Better Night provides uh, an excellent opportunity to be able to grow your practice if you want to move into sleep medicine. And it also offers the assurance that your patients will be returning back to your practice. So let me begin with talking a little bit more specifically about sleep physicians and how we work with sleep physicians. And I, I think I would start by saying, you know, we feel your pain. Uh, this, is a, this is a tough time. It was, it was a tough time even before COVID, but certainly now there's tremendous difficulty in keeping a lab clean, keeping it running, keeping it staffed and occupied uh, during the pandemic. And unfortunately, a lot of these problems will probably persist for several months, if not years. And ultimately, there will be other infections, other problems that may make some of this technology and virtual capability valuable for a long time to come. HST logistics can really be an, a nightmare, having uh, been uh, with doing HSTs now for uh, over 30 years. I know that starting a program de novo and having to do the purchasing, the inventory, the scheduling, the shipping, keeping track of machines where they are, whether they're lost or stolen or delayed, uh, can really be a very difficult, a daunting task to undertake, particularly if it's the first time that you've done that. So we offer the ability to really take that off of your shoulders and, and provide that for you. And again, as a sleep physician, you can get access to the data so you can see it and you can interpret it. Classically, DMEs are not sleep DMEs. They're bent metal, they're beds, they're commodes. And so the service that's received by your patients is oftentimes suboptimal. So there'll be no long-term follow-up, perhaps, after the 90 days when reimbursement occurs and Medicare compliance is met there'll be no visibility into how your patients are doing long-term. And this is part of the problem with the long-term compliance rates. We spend a lot of time and money trying to diagnose and take care of individuals, but then as they get out on their therapy, they don't have the resources, they don't have the support necessary in order to be successful. And if you try to provide that support as a sleep physician, it takes a lot of staff to do it. So I've talked to a number of sleep physicians who have multiple FTEs that they've hired, and these may be high-level FTEs who would be much better spent, their time would be better spent taking care of patients, but instead they're tracking down websites in the cloud, downloading compliance reports, trying to figure out who needs to be seen, when, and for what cause. Uh, sleep, uh, we at Better Night can do that for you. So uh, that will uh, free up potentially those FTEs to be able to do other things that are much more productive with regard to patient outcomes. For sleep physicians, sometimes uh, there's a dearth of tools to be able to reach out to the community and be able to offer additional screening, whether it be at primary cares or dentists. And by using the Better Night platform, we can improve and enhance your catchment area and actually identify individuals who would definitely benefit from a sleep consultation. Again, as we've talked about, insomnia care being, can be quite challenging, can be very time consuming. So it's really important to be able to have something that can be used as an adjunct to the CPAP therapy. Now, if we look at what the conventional model is right now, we see that you know there's case finding of some sort being done that leads to an evaluation, ultimately an in-lab diagnostic study, perhaps an HST. The in-lab studies, of course, uh, sometimes have ground to a halt during COVID or have certainly been backed up if the lab is still open and not closed. Then that leads to diagnostic follow-up and that requires more potentially inpatient or uh, personalized uh, communication. And then to a durable medical equipment provider who's not specializing in sleep medicine. And unfortunately, the likelihood that that leads to a successful outcome is unfortunately quite small. So if you look at the statistics on the bottom left, you see that despite everybody's best efforts, so we're all trying on, these, on this pathway, but despite our best efforts, 85% of people are said to be still undiagnosed. Of those people that get diagnosed, half of them never actually make it to therapy. And of those that are fortunate enough to make it through the system, through the silos, through the delays, and actually get on therapy, only about a third of them are still adherent a year later. 
So clearly a problem, something that needs uh, attention. From a patient standpoint, long appointment wait times, the need for multiple in-person visits, all of which extends the time frame to treatment and can also dramatically uh, increase the cost of getting through the system. So what can we do? Well, we can help to expand your practice. We can order, we can offer another pathway. So they can, after patients are identified, you can either use our screening tool or if you have your own, then when they're evaluated, you can use the telemedicine consultative services to be able to see your patients. And again, increase your uh, accessibility to the public. That can lead to an HST. You can order the HST. If the HST comes back and it's positive, you can interpret it and you can then even script for therapy such as CPAP, which can then be shipped out, can be set up virtually with very high success rates. And then you have the patient getting all of the coaching and you get all of the visibility into how they're doing. And we have all the accountability to make sure that your patients are doing well. By having the dual pathway and being able to flex them back and forth, you have a much higher chance of achieving the successful therapy that we all so desperately want. So as you can see, Better Night offers, I think, three very important benefits to sleep physicians. The first one is to increase patient acquisition, to be able to expand your practices reach beyond the local geography, and therefore you can reach other providers outside of your typical service area. The second is to provide the continuum of care. So we can help you in providing that continuum of care all the way from screening to therapy, depending on what you think and what your practice actually needs. And then the third and perhaps the most important is to improve the patient experience. So we can help to improve that experience by being able to perform an HST as well as a CPAP setup in their home, making it convenient, reassuring them that it's safe, particularly in times of, of COVID and very convenient. Now, what I'd like to do right now is uh, turn the discussion over to Dr. Wesley Fleming, and he can uh, describe for you a little bit more uh, in detail the particulars of how he's incorporated uh, Better Night into his practice of sleep medicine. Dr. Fleming? Thank you, Dr. Manapo. Yes, um, uh, I am, uh, I'm honored to, to be here. Thank you for asking. I'm a board certified sleep specialist in private practice in Southern California. Uh, my relationship with Better Night uh, has evolved over the last few years, uh, tailor making their services to fit uh, the unique needs of my changing practice. So we can, we can, um, we can look at this in uh, pre-COVID and post-COVID. So pre-COVID, I referred a large percentage of my patients who needed durable medical equipment because Better Night gave me and my patients a flexible model for CPAP setups, either in person, face-to-face, -face, or remote setups on a video conference with a respiratory therapist from Better Night, so uh, accommodating my patients' needs. Roughly speaking, I, I think I referred about 50% of our DME business to Better Night because they were more responsive and supportive to our patients with quicker turnaround time from my prescription to uh, treatment setup. They also gave me a great, um, they also have this great proprietary uh, compliance tracking program, which they shared with me uh, whenever requested uh, or on a quarterly basis. Uh, they also have like sleep coaches and respiratory therapists on call for my patients, um, which takes, you know, 24 hours a day, which takes a lot of the legwork and burden off of me and my staff. Rarely, rarely did I get a negative feedback from patients during my uh, follow-up visits in clinic, which, you know, which is refreshing and makes my job way, way easier. Now, post-COVID, uh, things changed. Um, COVID hit uh, during the first part of the quarantine. As many of you know, no overnight sleep studies were performed uh, at labs throughout the country, including ours. Uh, later on, overnight sleep studies resumed, but without PAP titrations, which reduced overall volume of sleep studies performed. Uh, our lab continued to provide home sleep study setups during 
COVID, but the loss of revenue from the overnight SEEP studies uh, was financially devastating and made my medical practice business model unsus unsustainable. So I had to pivot and move to an almost exclusive online telemedicine platform. Uh, the physical lab that we you know, had here in Southern California had to close uh, in June of this year, and I moved uh, all of my patients' um, database online. So now I see all of my non-complicated sleep apnea follow-up patients and new sleep apnea patients online. Uh, for these patients, I order mostly home sleep studies through Better Night. So the way it works is uh, I see the patient virtually online, and then I order the home sleep studies through Better Night. Uh, they then mail the home sleep studies directly to the patient, uh, either as a disposable home study or a non-disposable home study, depending upon the patient preference. Uh, they have uh, you know, extensive support for a patient setup on call 24 hours a day. Um, I get to read the, the sleep study, um, the home sleep study. Um, I also see my patients through the Better Night online portal, uh, which uh, allows me to consult patients outside of my geographic area, anywhere in California. I now get referrals from other physicians and dentists from outside of Orange County, uh, even as far away as Northern California. So doctors who are not sleep specialists, you know, physicians who are, who are not sleep specialists may also find Better Night helpful. Um, on the Better Night website, they can screen your patients for sleep apnea. Uh, your patients can also have consultations for sleep apnea with a sleep specialist on the Better Night website, um, avoiding long wait times in your local communities, your local community labs. Um, Better Night can track patient CPAP data use as required by insurance, eliminating your staff burden uh, for, of downloading and retrieving compliance reports. Better Night can also be an online resource for your insomnia patients, which reduces your burden and having you, know, having you prescribe controlled substances. Your staff won't have to deal with DME companies, which is a, a great thing. Um, Better Night continues to follow your patients for their lifetime, not just 90 days, which is great. Uh, Better Night sends you routine updates on your patient progress. So overall, what I'm saying is that they reduce the burden on you and your staff as a, a primary doctor or a referring uh, dentist. As a, a physician or a dentist, you can tailor make the Better Night services to fit your unique patient and practice needs. Uh, either sleep health assessment, you know, sleep health assessments, uh, home sleep study testing, uh, therapy setup, uh, or a combination of these. Better Night has treated over 35,000 patients last year alone with an incredible patient satisfaction. Uh, they work with all major insurance companies, and they provide compliance feedback to you, showing you your patient outcome, which is fantastic. No other company provides all of this under one roof. Uh, this ultimately results in you know, successful patients and thus happy doctors. Dominic, do you want to talk about the uh, Clarity um, uh, Better Night proprietary, proprietary software? I'd, I'd like to, yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Fleming. I certainly appreciate your perspective on your practice and how you've worked with Better Night. As Dr. Fleming uh, mentioned, we can achieve industry-leading compliance. And, and the way that we do that is, is, through, is through our Clarity proprietary analytical software. So this allows us with, to produce the unprecedented outcomes and accountability that I've been referring to and the transparency. So the data that are presented are objective reports of adherence. We can do exception-based coaching uh, to the patients that are on therapy. And then we can also provide ongoing therapy supplies on a schedule that's tailored to a particular individual and provides them with the supplies that they need when they need them, as opposed to just providing supplies on a random schedule. Now, 
clarity basically allows us, in summary, to reach out to the right person at the right time with the right intervention. So how does it do that? Well, if you look on the left-hand side, you can see the inputs that go into the clarity engine. We have EMR records, we have patient notes, we also have sales orders that uh, reflect uh, previous purchases of CPAP supplies. And then we also have access to tens of thousands of data points with regard to CPAP usage. And I would want to point out here another portion of the Clarity engine and what we do. We can use the data on the prior 30 days of compliance. And then we've worked with a company named Enso Data using their all of uh, their uh, artificial intelligence engine. And based on the 30 days past performance, we can predict phenotypes and 30 day compliance into the future. So we're working to use AI to look at past performance as a way to forecast future performance. And then of course, AHI at the bottom, we have a, a variety of variables from sleep studies that we can uh, obtain and put into clarity. Once Clarity has all of these inputs, it then outputs a report to a better night sleep specialist. And you can see the cohort of patients that that specialist is addressing. Of those 28 patients, there are only six individuals that perhaps need to be addressed today. So Clarity is updated on a daily basis. Tens of thousands of patients are updated uh, every single day. We do direct uh, API calls to the cloud from let's say the ResMed or Respironics uh, cloud uh, platforms, we can form our own flags in terms of the things that we want to look for. So we can outreach perhaps if, uh, if we identify in clarity that there has been a stoppage in active modem data transmission, or if a patient has an elevated AHI, or if their compliance has dropped below 70%. In addition, we can also characterize changes in behavior. So we look at something called struggle. We can find individuals who may be using CPAP on a regular basis, but perhaps they are not achieving four hours per day and they don't achieve uh, typical compliance, but what they are doing is they are using it on a daily basis. So when there's a big difference between the usage and the adherence, we refer to that as struggle. We can highlight that and we find that those individuals are particularly benefited by reaching out to them. So what does this look like? Well, here's an example of a population management report. You can see on the left-hand side, a diagnostic cohort of 685 individuals. Of those 685, 541 at this moment in time had completed their HST. Of those 541, we now move them to the right-hand side. Um, having had the diagnostic study performed, we know how many were positive, how many were negative. I think it's important when you look at these pie charts to realize that although we can slice and dice the pie many different ways and label the slices of the pie differently, what's most important is that we have all the slices of the pie. So we know our denominator, we keep track of our denominator and patients don't get lost in the system. If we move ahead now to the uh, therapy side, here on the left you can see 508 patients that are referred for PAP therapy uh, and their breakdown in terms of where they are in the system. On the right hand side, once they've been started on therapy, you can see the ones that have internal modems or external modems, the ones that are um, we don't have actual modem data for, but we have communication with, so we know that they're reordering supplies and that they're actually using the device. The net result of all of this is that we can produce a, pop a population management report, as you see right here. So on the top left, we break down the apnea severities for the HSTs that we've done, mild, moderate, severe. On the top right, in that cohort, we know the average night used, the average hours used, and the average treated AHI. For this cohort, it was 2.61. Typically, it's under three, and obviously, we try to keep that under five. On the right-hand side, PAP compliance at 77% for this particular cohort, 
And on the bottom, you can see aggregated patient satisfaction very high in the high 90s. So with that, I'd like now to turn it over to uh, Dr. Saul to further discuss Better Night and how he's integrated that into his practice of dental sleep medicine. Dr. Saul. Dr. Saul. Dr. Saul, this is Sri at Sleep Review. Um, please make sure that your phone that you're on is unmuted. Um, you are not muted within GoToWebinar, so you should be good to go. I'm unmuted. Okay, we can hear you. You are set. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry for the little technical uh, glitch there, uh, but uh, thanks again for having me as part of this um, presentation. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my background and how I got involved in Better Night. I was trained as a general dentist, uh, practiced for four years, went back to medical school, and then was trained as an otolaryngologist. I had an interest in sleep medicine, which led me to pursue my boards in sleep medicine. And so uh, I practice uh, as a sleep physician. Um, uh, treating patients, diagnosing them, and treating them with both um, surgical management of obstructive sleep apnea, CPAP, and oral appliance therapy. So as I uh, went on in this field, it became apparent to me that uh, my dental colleagues, as I would go to meetings, were struggling to grow their practices. And, and I, I really wanted to try and understand what were the issues they had to grow their practice. If they had the expertise, knowledge, and training, why couldn't they grow their practices? And uh, so, uh, you know, essentially what the problem is, is the dentist has been asked by the ADA in October of 2017 to screen all their patients for obstructive sleep apnea. And they really need a convenient way after they screen the patient to get them diagnosed. And of course, there's the advent of telemedicine that can help them consult with physicians. And they really, once the, the patient is uh, diagnosed, they are gonna need a prescription from the uh, sleep physician for oral appliance therapy. And the, the concern and the challenge has been when the dentist screens the patient and doesn't see the patient back in their office for an oral appliance therapy, particularly when they screen in the mild to moderate category. And so uh, what has happened is during the screening process, if you really dissect the system, the patient screened at the dental office, they're referred to the specialist, and then the specialist refers, performs the diagnostic study, uh, but often the patient does not refer to the dentist. And herein lies the uh, frustration of the dentist. So in the Better Night platform, uh, we had to look at this, uh, take it apart, and decide how could we de design a better system. So in the Better Night uh, system, the dentist refers the patient to Better Night, where they can have a uh, screening online option if they choose. Um, this can be done while they're in the waiting room. It can be done online, however they choose to do it. Uh, and the patient will then complete the online consult, and uh, home sleep study is arranged. Uh, and then the patient is referred back to the uh, dentist for oral appliance therapy. And um, really what we've designed Better Night to do is to partner with the dentist. And the idea is that uh, it's a best practices approach to the total continuum of care. It became apparent to me that there were many companies out there that were doing home sleep testing, they were doing medical billing, they were doing uh, other aspects of the dental sleep medicine practice, but no one really was offering all the uh, services inclusive. And um, in addition, one of the problems was that as the dentist screens their patient, if they screen the patient and they turn out to have uh, severe obstructive sleep apnea and they become a candidate for PAP therapy, then the dentist was left trying to figure out 
where should they send the patient to, what sleep position, how would they arrange that? And now they have um, uh, the, really the obligation to get that patient treated. And in the Better Night system, uh, the patient will be treated by the Better Night uh, DME uh, component. So really what we designed in this uh, platform is to have a patient-centric uh, program, meaning the patient gets the treatment that they want that's appropriate for them, and that it really empowers the dentist to treat the majority of their patients. Uh, and I must uh, emphasize that we followed the guidelines of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine and the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine so it's really a consultative approach that the dentist partners with the sleep physician online via telemedicine to provide this best practices approach to the total continuum of care. And this is really truly what uh, differentiates the Better Night platform from other platforms that are out there. I realized early on, I had my own telemedicine company uh, about two years ago, and that putting together the pieces of this from a technical standpoint are very challenging. And, and that's why it's hard to do. And we have worked very hard at providing a platform, as Dr. Manafa has said, is modular and people can come in at different uh, points in order to utilize the services that they desire. So it, it's really the hope that um, uh, as dentists refer patients to Better Night, we will be able to handle all aspects of the care of the patients with making the dentist um, empower them really to treat the majority of their patients and the patients who are not candidates for oral appliance therapy, Better Night will handle the uh, PAP therapy as indicated. Thank you, Dr. Saul. Appreciate uh, hearing your perspective on dental sleep medicine. I'd like to conclude by reviewing just some of the benefits that I think are very important with regard to working with the Better Night team. Again, the Better Night platform was built to be a collaborative tool. We've purposely thought long and, and hard about the challenges that physicians and dentists face. So for sleep doctors, we offer a flexible and a modular solution to help preserve your practice in these challenging times as well as the opportunity to incorporate telemedicine and a digital platform to help expand your reach, reduce your overhead, and to be able to build revenue. For all physicians dealing with sleep patients, Better Night offers a high quality, cost-effective diagnosis and therapy with unparalleled success and visibility into the process. For dentists, Better Night allows for rapid diagnosis of sleep apnea and the assurance that your patients will remain yours. So I wanna thank all of you for your kind attention. I look forward to working with you in the future. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we can now take some questions. I think we have a little bit of extra time. Thank you so much for those informative presentations. We're about to begin the audience Q&A. If you haven't already, please input your questions into the Q&A box. Also, just a reminder, this webinar is being recorded. In the follow-up email, which you will get tomorrow, uh, we'll include a link to the recording. And uh, we'd appreciate it if you take the course evaluation, which will appear on your screen after the webinar ends. And uh, now let's take our first audience question. Uh, Dr. Saul, uh, how do the newer oral appliance device designs influence physician confidence in oral appliance therapy? I think the best way to answer that is uh, physicians want to know that the appliance is uh, efficacious and effective in the treatment for obstructive sleep apnea and different design characteristics that can reinforce that concept is that they maintain the jaw position. I think there's um, many different types of appliance designs out there. And um, the appliances that maintain jaw position by their individual design, for instance, a uh, CAD CAM milled appliance uh, is gonna maintain the jaw position and have confidence to the, or should show, uh, develop confidence to the physician that in fact, the jaw position is being maintained. Very often, uh, you'll hear that uh, an appliance is working for the first couple of weeks, and then afterwards, uh, the patient says, 
uh, I'm snoring again, uh, I'm having symptoms, and uh, that's because the design of the appliance is not conducive to maintaining the, produce, the protrusive position that's necessary to eliminate the apneic event. Uh, and that's certainly and, um, one of the. Uh, go ahead. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, the comfort, the fit. Um, a lot of physician concerns are uh, hygiene, uh, ease of uh, cleaning the appliance, whether or not there's tooth movement, tooth pain, jaw pain. And the newer designed appliances have been designed in such a fashion to address all those concerns and minimize the um, side effects and um, uh, things that have. Uh, made physicians resistant to uh, utilize oral appliance therapy for OSA. Great point. Um, as we ask these questions, if other presenters would like to jump in, um, even if I don't call on you, you are welcome to do that. Uh, Dr. Manofu, I'll send this to you. Um, have you published your CPAP compliance results? Yes, thank you. As I mentioned, we think it's important to uh, subject our protocols to peer review. So in 2015, we took this CPAP uh, platform and we did a study and published that in Sleep and Breathing in 2015. In that study, we found that our compliance rates, we compared sort of the conventional hands-on CPAP uh, follow-up program to a high-tech program. And what we found was that both of them were equally successful. There was actually a trend toward the high-tech platform being slightly more successful. It had compliance rates in the low 80s and the, the standard program had compliance rates in the low 70s. So I think it's very important that we continue to critically look at those and make sure that they are peer-reviewed. That leads into another question. Um, what do you think are the keys to your CPAP compliance success? Yes, yeah, so I think you know we've laid out a lot of them. I, I think that the, perhaps the most important, again, is being able to reach the right person at the right time with the right intervention. Uh, as we go forward, using artificial intelligence, trying to have predictive algorithms, that will be able to determine whether someone is likely to get into trouble in the next 30 days based on how they did in the past 30 days, I think that will be important as well. At the end of the day, perhaps the most important thing is the training of the sleep coaches, the education, the standardization of the education of the patient and making sure that every patient that goes through the program gets the same educational material, whether it be about obstructive apnea or whether it be about the CPAP device itself. And then the coaches that provide this information, again, are highly trained, specialized training to make sure that they can relate to the patient and they can relate the information to the patient in such a way that the patient can understand it. Dr. Fleming, how do I refer patients to Better Night? I believe, well, there are multiple ways. Um, you can go onto the Better Night website, and the information is there for referral. Um, Better Night can also send you um, referral packets, either in the mail or email it to you. Um, and those are, those are the two ways that, um, that I see you can refer patients. Yes, and I just add, Dr. Fleming, that you can see the contact information on the screen. Don't hesitate to reach out to us, and we would be happy to uh, see how to streamline the referral process for a particular physician or a particular practice so that we can uh, very expeditiously intake the patients that you referred to Better Night. Dr. Saul, uh, do, pa do dentists prefer to bill the patient themselves for the sleep study or handle billing through a third party? Well, I think there's no um, exact answer to that. Some uh, dentists prefer to um, bill the insurance company. Some uh, want to uh, bill the patient themselves. It really depends on state regulations. And uh, throughout the United States, there are very different state laws and regulations on whether a dentist can uh, dispense the HST, they can bill for it, they can diagnose sleep apnea, 
and the, um, uh, whether or not it's appropriate for them to, to bill for the services. I think the best way to answer that is uh, any dentist uh, wanting to do HST, bill for HSTs, should consult their local dental society and the billing companies that specialize in this to get help. And uh, carriers, do you work with? So we are we are you know widely contracted the Aetnas, the the Cignas, the Health Nets, the uh, Medicare. So pretty much with all of the large carriers, we don't really have uh, many carriers that we're not contracted with. So again, you can see the contact information if you just reach out to us if there is a particular payer that you are concerned about that you want to know about. We would be easy to easy for us to find out what that uh, situation is, but rest assured, we have a very wide, uh, very wide reach. This is probably also um, a good question for you. Um, at Better Night, what percent of patients are prescribed CPAP versus oral appliance therapy versus other forms of therapy such as NeuroStim? Yes, well, I think that, you know, if you look at the United States uh, in general, Probably more like five to ten percent of individuals perhaps get referred for uh, oral appliances. Uh, in Europe, that number is is much higher. Uh, I think that in our practice, that number is probably on the order of about ten percent. Uh, and we are working with Dr. Saul to try to uh, make sure that those patients that are appropriate for an oral appliance are have the opportunity to get an oral appliance. And that I think is, is twofold. There are, there are patients for whom the initial therapy may be best as an oral appliance. And then there are those who are having difficulty with CPAP despite everyone's best efforts who may benefit from an oral appliance as well. So our goal is to continue to uh, make sure that oral appliances are widely available to our patients so that we can prescribe them as needed and as appropriate. Dr. Saul, uh, do you see the role of oral appliance therapy growing um, in the U.S. from the current levels of about 5-10% uh, to the European levels of about 50%? And what is needed to move that? I, I absolutely see the role of oral appliances growing. I, I think one of the fundamental things that's needed is increase awareness of oral appliance, increase awareness of their role in obstructive sleep apnea. I think all of us as sleep physicians, or, or really as dentists often, will see patients who it was never recommended or never suggested to them. So we have an awareness issue, number one. Uh, number two is the notion that uh, oral appliances don't work. As a matter of fact, uh, I attended the um, Vancouver World Sleep Congress, and Dr. Sestouli, I'm sure everybody in the audience knows who he is, uh, gave a uh, presentation on oral appliances ready for prime time. And he gave a very, very um, convincing argument for the utilization of oral appliance therapy. One of the concerns often is um, cost and insurance coverage. And I think a lot of physicians are not aware of the fact that uh, oral appliance therapy is covered by most insurance companies, including Medicare. And in fact, the coverage has uh, been extended uh, throughout uh, many insurance companies over time. Uh, additionally, uh, what can increase the awareness or, or the um, distribution of oral appliances as, as a um, treatment is through the Better Night platform. The dentist, as Dr. Manafo said, when the dentist refers the patient in, if they're appropriate candidate, we are gonna uh, recommend the oral appliance and make sure the dentist who referred the patient in for the consultation gets back the prescription, the information, everything they need in a timely, seamless fashion so that they can treat their patients. Thank you. Uh, to finish on time today, I want to conclude by saying thank you to our three presenters, our sponsor, Better Night, and to our audience members. Email me at sroy at medcore.com with comments, questions, and future webinar suggestions. Visit us at www.sleepreviewmag.com and thank you for participating in the Sleep Review webinar. Thank you very much.